Hi, everybody. I'm Sherry Hudson Passy from the Sleep Committee, and I am so excited today to be here with Jan Joyce. Jan is going to be um, the coordinator for a brand new class for SLIG this year. And I'm so, well, next year, 2022. <laughs> and so I am so excited. And the name of her class is Critical Thinking Methods for Your Genealogy Breakthroughs. Now, I am so intrigued by this title. What do you mean by critical thinking? It does sound like a mouthful, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> About breaking it down to maybe just calling it critical thinking. And then I even had discussions with Peg and other folks about, hey, is there any other phrase you can use for that? Because it sounds it sounds kind of uh, academic and kind of boring. And I promise you it is not, at least not to me, I am biased. So, so it really is a body of knowledge that's used in, in many fields, right? In science and, and mm -hmm. other fields. And um, I thought if I can use that as a framework for genealogy, could that be meaningful to me? That's how it started then yeah. to others. And so I, you know, we as genealogists, we analyze, we evaluate, and then we decide things, right? And that's what mm -hmm. critical thinking is. It's helping us to do those three things, to first analyze, evaluate, and then decide. And in outside of genealogy, it's, it's used and been popularized recently, mostly for news, because, you know, news, we have a plethora of news now, right, on all these different social media, and a lot of people take it as being fact when they read it. And so critical thinking is being taught about how you really need to rethink that when you're getting news off of mm -hmm. all these different sources. So we're gonna use it in genealogy and a lot of it will sound really familiar to genealogists and maybe some of it will be new, but framing it this way helps us to think and act in new ways for our, our research questions, our analysis and correlation of records, and then ultimately deciding what is evidence and not. So we'll use it for, um, things like uh, brainstorming and being open-minded and um, that kind of tracks with analyzing and evaluating right and then right. one of the one of the topics that I'm really excited about that's brand new is I'm calling it mini research questions m-i-n-i -I, not m-a-n-y although I like both <laughs> and I have a little something to show you here yeah uh, I should have put it up on a powerpoint screen but uh, I thought oh, good I can see it I'm sure I'm sure of yours okay all yeah. right so like, let's say we have the question is, who is the father of, right? That's one of our, our mother of, that's mm -hmm. we often our stump on that, right? So we'll break that down. Instead of just being stuck, we'll break it down into like, well, do we have too many candidates or do we have no candidates? And then we'll break that down further. Like, let's say we'll start with geography and there'll be, you know, do maybe dozens of these categories, mm -hmm. but from the geography category, well, you know, where did she live and what time frame did she arrive there possibly? What were the ethnicities of the people who arrived there at the same time? You know, what were the, the religious uh, um, proclivities of the people who arrived there? Other surnames. So we'll break it down into a lot of categories like that so that mm -hmm. we, can't, we can't answer the who was the father of, but we can answer a lot of those little questions yes. which might lead us to who was the father of. I love that. That sounds really exciting. <laughs> I think it's, I do. I think it sounds really, really exciting. So who, who do you think your target student would be? Who, who would be somebody who would really get a lot out of this class? Oh, thank you. That's a great question. So from a profile perspective, I think an advanced or in, intermediate genealogist would from, you know, from education mm -hmm. experience, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think that it's more than that. I think it takes, a, it's going to take a person who is really open to new methods, who's interested in engaging in hands-on because every session that will be presented during the week, all 20, have some kind of hands-on activity, tool, technique, or way to practice it. So it's not gonna be one of those courses where you sit and get lectured at, which are often very good and full mm -hmm. of information, but it's gonna be very hands-on and it's gonna be somebody who is also willing to work with others because we have partner and- ah and teams, round tables, and all different kinds of techniques that will help us think better. Because I know that when I bounce of an, an idea off a friend, I get new ideas, right? Oh, so absolutely. Take that into account of, of maximizing the use of others and kind of crowdsourcing for brainstorming. So, um, so think, it's going to take a person who is willing to get up, move around, mm -hmm. both physically and mentally. So, <laughs> right? Yes. And Yes. Engage and, and be kind of, you know, I don't want to say silly, but we'll really be able to, to open their, themselves up that way. That is sounding, it's sounding more and more fun. It sounds like it's going to be a really fun class. It's going to stretch people and uh, do Thank things you know. and, and think in ways that they haven't thought before. And I think we, we all need <laughs> 
to, to look at things kind of out of the box. So I'm, I'm, I'm loving, the more I hear, the more I'm loving <laughs> the sound of this class. So what would a typical day be like? You talked about doing some hands-on. Um, yeah. So, you know, the typical day will, of course, include some instruction or discussion. Like I, I kind of don't like the word lecture, mm -hmm. but you know, where the instructor will provide information and, and teach, right? Mm -hmm. And then either each session will have a part that's hands-on for everybody, or there's a few workshops. If you go and look at the, the SLIG mm -hmm. website, each session is outlined, all of them. And there's a few workshops where we then will take even like a whole, a whole um, you know, one and a quarter hours time to practice and learn something and improve it and work with the instructors as well. So it's kind of, um, it's jam packed and fun in that way. I got, I brought a few things to, to show and oh, tell. Oh, great. Regarding the instruction style. I like to show and tell. <laughs> One of the things that we'll be doing at, at the end is writing and writing is, um, uh -huh. you know, pe people, it's like a love hate thing. I have to say on writing. Yeah. yeah. It's stuck. And so I have some methods, like I know this looks silly, but I have some like popsicle sticks, right? Mm -hmm. And those will be writing prompts that will help us get started. Or we might use something like this, like a reveal wheel, right? Where oh. you can flip it around and, and um, get ways to get unstuck or get started. Mm -hmm. And then a box of cards that will help uh, prompt us as well. So those will be used in some of the different courses um, or different sessions, um, uh -huh. particularly on writing. That it just, yeah, it just sounds so much fun. It really does. It sounds like you really put a lot of thought into this class and it just, it just sounds like so much fun. Is there something we need to do for those that want to sign up for the class? What do they need to do at home? Is there anything they need to do to prepare? Yes, thank you. Um, because the focus is going to be on like your brick walls, right? Mm -hmm. It's not on, you know, our teaching. It's our methods that will help you. Like we're really, we're really, like hyper focused on that, right? Like mm -hmm. we want you to come away with some aha moments from the week. And you might not have that uh, breakthrough of who is the father of, but you'll have some mini breakthroughs mm -hmm. or be able to make those breakthroughs after the course, we believe. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the preparation is creating a written format for your brick walls. In other words, I want you to come with five brick walls. I will give a template to you. It won't be like, hey, write me 20 pages. <laughs> it will be one most. It might not even be a page. It might be like a fill in a form kind of a thing. Okay. But so that we're prepared for those sessions during mm -hmm. the day. And we'll say, okay, pull out, you know, brick wall A or B or C, that kind of thing. Okay. And then that will be what you use to apply a certain technique to yourself or with a friend, a partner, depending on what, what the activity is. So that, that we're a progressing your brick wall during the week. Mm -hmm. I love that. I really do love that because you're, you're learning these new methods, but you're applying it to your own family instead of somebody else's, <laughs> you know, and working no, I love them to apply to my family, but yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You should throw us some, you know, <laughs> yeah, that would, that help us. Those will be, you know, Cause each instructor as well as, as we use case studies or examples as well. Mm -hmm. So you'll hear a little bit of that because, you know, I, I mean, every time I use a case study in genealogy research, like it, it was really amazing. The power of all the yeah. brain room and oh, so yeah. that's what we'll take advantage of as well that sounds great so will there be homework so you know we're, we're doing these things in class yeah, right. what 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 um homework and and you know i'm a big homework fan because okay. i do feel that if you don't apply what you're learning it just goes <laughs> i agree I, I absolutely agree so that's why we're going to apply it during the day but we'll, mm -hmm. have a, we'll have a few things at night too and i don't mean a few things every night We'll have like one assignment a night that is optional okay. that uh, students can choose to do. And I'm really actually putting in the instructions to only take an hour to do it because I still want you to take advantage of being in Salt Lake City yeah. and being with your friends and being able to go to the library. Yeah. Um, so an example would be like, I have, I have kind of labeled them. You know, I kind of like doing this. I have a marketing degree. In fact, my girlfriend <laughs> has some silly things like dare to share. So one night you'll dare to share something with a friend and the friend can be from our class or even another course who's there. Oh, okay. So you can bring them in to help you. Oh, and the great. Another theme is sip and share. So you can grab a cup of tea, a coffee or a glass of wine and you're uh, sipping and, and sharing or searching actually, sip and search with a friend mm -hmm. um, so that you'll be able to do that in an hour and then move on to whatever else you want to do. That sounds so much fun. And again, we're using our own families, yes. our own research problems. So, you know, I can see coming away at the end of the week, just making 
so many discoveries. Okay. Um, you do have other instructors. You, you started a minute to talk about your other instructors. So who else will be in the class with you? I'm super, super excited about them. So Deborah Kohler, who is a, um, a great genealogist, very passionate and just a generally fun person <laughs> is teaching this um, course on transcription. Now, don't walk away from me right now because I know that sounds really boring and Deborah and I joke about it and we laugh about it, but she's using transcription in an application that I promise you you've never done before okay. that will help you with um, learning, absorbing, evaluating information mm -hmm. um, that is, has provided breakthroughs for, for the people that have tried it. And oh, so wow. we're so excited about her session. Um, Kim Richardson, who is one of the best genealogists I know, she focuses her own work and client work on those really tough Southern states. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> she has developed a technique for offline, um, offline, uh, not offline, it was offline evaluation, I guess I would call it. So where you're not on your computer. I know. <laughs> can yeah, we do that? Good. I know you guys can do it. We might all have shakes and withdrawal, but when you're using offline methods of um, really kind of trying to figure out your, yeah. your problems and your challenges and break down your brick walls. Yeah. And um, Sharon Hoyt, oh, wow, I can just say like, she's just amazing. She is um, probably the best genealogical storyteller I have ever heard. So she's just really fun to listen to. Okay. So smart. And she'll be uh, leading a session on search on in searching online and offline records okay. which uh, i know you know something about sherry and uh, <laughs> they'll be uh taking us through how to just do that in a in a better way okay. or uh, when we're just how we're what we're looking for how we're looking for it mm -hmm. that kind of thing. so i'm really excited for that and i know i can improve in that area as well oh the, everything is just it's just sounding so great you know and you were you were you know worried at the beginning this critical thinking method this this is going to be a fun class this is really really going to be a fun class so in the end when the week is over and you're done what are your goals or your hopes for everybody taking the class and and how you know it's going you know what you're going to determine is a success for people what are, what are your thoughts about that yeah that's that's a great question um so you, you know i'm really focused on each student's um successes and and breakthroughs and so mm -hmm. i'm hoping that during the week they have breakthroughs and it could mm -hmm. be little ones or big ones they'll have some right. aha moments. i'm like oh my gosh i didn't try that now i'm going to go try this this and this at home i don't have time now but i'm gonna do it at home so yeah yeah weekend at home i think they'll have a lot of of uh avenues to pursue for those brick walls right mm -hmm. I, think I also want them to come away energized and empowered to be able to do that with the tools and techniques that we've offered them for themselves and for friends. And that they really, are, like our very last session of the week is to review all those tools because they, they we will have been given them a lot, right? And, yes. and, it, and it won't be like just conceptual, it will be application oriented. Mm -hmm. where they have tangible tools to help them when they get home. So they can't be like, I forget what we talked about. Yeah. It, it'll be in their syllabus and as well as maybe hands out and a tool that will help them remember like, oh, if, if I'm stuck or I'll try this or I'll try that. Right. I, I love this. This sounds like a fabulous class. I am so glad that this is your inaugural year and, and it's it's a uh, it's been accepted as a class because it, it really sounds wonderful. And Thank and you. like you said, you know, the success may be that you found something. But really just learning something new and applying it in your research really is the ultimate is what you want. Because right. sometimes we just can't break down those brick walls. No matter no matter if we use every tool in the book, we right. can't and records sometimes just don't exist no matter how hard we're looking for them, right? Is that. <laughs> but right, but just learning the techniques and discovering things in a different way and thinking right. in different ways. I think we all need that. So Thank you so much for joining me to talk about your class. Remember, registration is coming up really soon, and it's Jan Joyce's class, Critical Thinking Methods for Your Genealogy Breakthrough. So thank you. Thank you so much, sure. Jan. This has been so much fun. We'll see you next time as I talk to other people who are teaching classes for SLIG. See you later. Bye, everybody. <laughs>